Welcome to the Leader on the Mix show. I'm Audrey Tong. In today's episode, we speak to legendary salesperson Tom Hopkins. Many believe that a natural ability is sufficient for a successful selling career. However, the truth of the matter is, a natural skill combined with a how-to training is the real secret to a high level of sales productivity. After benefiting from professional training, Tom Hopkins went on to be a dedicated student, refining and internalizing sales methods that set him apart as a sales leader in his industry. Join us in today's episode of the Leronomics Show with Roshan Thiran as we learn more about the life of sales guru Tom Hopkins and the strategies he adopts to close a successful sale. Welcome to the Leadernomic Show. I'm with Tom Hopkins, author of 14 books and also a master sales trainer. Tom, it's really glad to have you here with us today. Thank you, Roshan. I'm excited to come back to your lovely country and enjoy your fun food and people. Yeah, it's your second time here to Malaysia. Right? Second time, yes. All right, so you, we will, soon you'll have a collection of stories to tell us about Malaysia. But Oh yes, <laughs> I take them all back to my family and we just love, the food is so different here. Mm. Do, you, do you enjoy it or it's Oh uh, yes, yes. You know, it, it's kind of like a, uh, an experience to have new foods mm. that are totally different. So I just go and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah, that's a wise thing to do. You know? It <laughs> is. <laughs> you know, tell us a bit about your background. You, you currently, you know, you, you wrote sale, you know, sales for dummies, or selling for dummies. You know? Oh, yes. Uh, I've so written I've, three, I've never, three books for dummies. Oh, okay. You really? Okay. I, I've never met anyone who wrote that, uh, a, a dummy book. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm honored to be in your presence. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but, but tell us how you got into this space. I mean, how, how did you... Because um, I know you, you were in real estate and you, you, you left, I think, college very early. And yes. How, tell us a bit of your background, how well, you got into selling. Br br briefly, I um, quit college after 90 days. It wasn't for me. And I didn't know what I was going to do. So I became a construction worker, uh, carrying steel as an iron worker. Mm. And after a year of that, I uh, was very fortunate that I thought I've got to get into sales. And my dad suggested that I go into real estate. Okay. And, and I think one of the most exciting things in life is when you are fortunate to find your niche. Mm. It, it, the niche in life is when you find something that you love to do that's not work right. and that you get so good at. It's kind of like any great athlete. They didn't wake up and they were young and say, I'll be an athlete, but, but they got good at it. They mastered it. They then started making a lot of money mm -hmm. and became professionals. Yep. And that's kind of what happened to me. I found real estate as my niche. And I spent eight years finding people homes, which is a wonderful thing to do to help people find a property. And I did that. And then my last year, uh, I everything came together, Roshan, and I sold 365 homes in one year, wow. which averaged one a day. day. Yeah, wow. And if exactly anyone- Exactly 365, huh? Well, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> my manager at the time said, Tom, no one's ever done this in the mm. history of the United States. And if you can sell 365 homes, averaging one a day, you will be famous. And my phone started ringing and I have been living literally on an airplane teaching all over the world ever since that year. Wow, okay. Yeah. Wow, and so amazing. it's been an exciting life. And you enjoy teaching. I oh, I love it. When you can change people's lives, when you can have people that are making X amount of dollars make two or three times more, mm. then get the home of their dreams, the car of their dreams, and become financially independent. So right. when they're in their golden years, they live in total dignity. What a wonderful life. Uh, no, I must ask you, you know, because a lot of people say, you know, being a salesperson is a, is, a, is a skill, it's something you're born with, it's, it's an inherited trait, you know, and yet there's another camp that says, no, anything can be learned, you, you know, you can be anything you want to be. Um, where do you stand in this? Uh, well, I have fought this myth all of my life because there are people that feel you have to be a natural born salesperson. Now, granted, if you have a nice personality, a nice way of communicating, working with people, you have the a aptitude to be better in selling. Right. But the people, and there's two extreme personalities, Roshan. There's the interesting extrovert, okay. and the interested, uh, I'm sorry, the interesting. interesting extrovert, and the interested introvert. Now the extra, uh, um, 
introvert, interesting extrovert. That a boy, the interesting <laughs> extrovert, who's outgoing, talkative, witty. Yep. They come across too much like a salesperson, mm. and there's many people turned off mm. by someone who's selling. Yep. Then, of course, the interested introvert, who's somewhat humble, shy, a gentle person, they, if they learn to ask the right questions, they can become master right. salespeople. And because they're interested in you, yes, they're more, more interested in you yeah. than in themselves. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I've tried all my life, the five million people who have come to my seminars, I've tried all my life to say, don't act like a salesperson. Act like the very nice person. And if they like and trust you, and if you love your product and they can see your belief and conviction, right. they'll say yes and want to do business with you, mm. not only once, but for a lifetime. Mm. So that's a prerequisite, right? You must really authentically love your product or, or, oh, yes. or authentically believe that oh, it's yes. good I'm, On interviews like this, Roshan, I'm asked, where, what's the best thing to sell where I can make the most money? Mm. And I say, don't think about the money. Yeah. Think about what you love to do. Mm. And people will say yes based more on your passion, your conviction, your belief, than on your technical knowledge. So you've got to do research. Mm. I, I think I did well in real estate because I so believed in it and I so loved helping people get their home. Uh, yes, I can sell financial ins uh, services, insurance, because protecting people's lives I believe in. So probably one of my main businesses is the insurance field. And of course, being I love vehicles, love automobiles, I teach a lot of automobile people, okay. which, you know, th that industry in our country is so drastically changed, it's become much more professional in this last 10 years. Okay, it's amazing. And, and so I assume you believe anybody can do sales then, right? As I think anybody we... can be a salesperson. In fact, in a way, selling could be called a universal language. I think that a parent is selling their children on doing the right things, yep. becoming the right type of adult. I think husbands and wives staying married and happy they are in a way, selling if you understand other. all of my training, they are selling. Okay. So I think in a way it's a universal language. Yep. And the t people that do best are really the opposite of what you expect. They're nice people. They have a humility about them. They aren't pushy. They're pulley with questions. They'd rather listen than talk, which is the opposite of what most people are like in selling. Right, right. And, and, and you, you, I mean, is there specific skills that you must attain to become a top salesperson? Oh, yes. There's lots of skills. The art of asking the right questions. At that the right that is a whole skill. Okay. The art of qualifying as to finding out their capacity, their ability to say yes. Are they the decision maker? Do they have the ability financially? And, and is there another party involved? Oh, there's so many nuances. I have almost 50 hours of training. And if you looked at 50 hours of ideas and technique, that's a lot of training. Wow. And a lot of it can be got from your website, right? Oh, oh yeah, it's all on the website. We have even your DVDs, one, your, your DVDs CDs. And, and one thing I did too, Roshan, is I, I have a free resource page, which means people can just come onto my website, go to the free resource page. They can get some ideas, some thank you notes, some wonderful things. There's no charge for it. Okay, that's fantastic. I want them to be more <laughs> successful. And okay. if they are, because of me, then I am, and it's a win-win. Okay, we're going to take a quick break right Great. now. And we'll be back with Tom Hopkins here on the Leader Nomics Show. Welcome back to the Leader Nomics Show. I'm with Tom Hopkins, Master Sales Trainer. Tom, you know, it's uh, how did you prepare yourself for this life? Were there instances, uh, you know, you know, different different people that impacted you along this journey that enabled you to acquire some of these skills that you talked about or of learned along the way? Yes, and I think, Roshan, that's something a person needs to do, and that's look for mentors. Mm. Look for people who are the people they'd like to become. 
And I started many years ago when I was just a young person looking for people that had either written a book or had created ideas. Uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale was okay. a dear friend. Uh, Earl Nightingale was a dear friend. And these were my mentors. And you don't need to recreate the wheel. The wheel is already done. You have to learn how to copy it. And so I found mentors that gave me advice, gave me ideas. And of course, I started reading their books and listening to their ideas. And I, I became a student. And I think that's one of the keys to success is never stop being a student of not only life, but of people and of, of how you can interact and, and cre be creative. I mean, that's a whole search. Right. And so I found the right folks and I learned from them and I'm a constant student. I, 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 my car is always, I do love music, but I have training to, uh, CDs in my car to stay motivated. And I think that's part of it. So search for the people that'll help you become the person of your dreams. Mm -hmm. And then once you become that person, teach others okay. to become the person of their dreams. But, but how did you start? I mean, were, were there some crucible moments that triggered you to, to, uh, yes. to, to, to be motivated to get into this habit of well, learning when I, and growing? Sure. When I, a, a turning point was when I quit college. I'd only gone for three months, and my dad was so mad at me. And he told me this. He said, son, we spent time and money to get you a college education, and you quit. And he said, I'll always love you, even though now I know you'll never amount to anything. And when he said that, it was like a fire started in me mm -hmm. where I said, I will prove. And I think most successful people, Roshan, at one point in their life have something to prove to someone. Yep. It's, it's kind of like the woman who goes through a tragic divorce. And I've had so many come to my training. They have children. They have no money. They have no job. They learn selling suddenly they start making good money they become top producers now they make more than their husband that divorced them and of course there's an example of a turning point they had something to prove right. which lit a fire to where they were on they had a burning desire to be somebody mm -hmm. and everybody wants to be somebody and you can if you find another person to help you be the somebody right so we all need to find our little fires that uh, yes. spark our Sure. Growth, huh? And that's kind of what happened to me. And I, again, I, I became a student of the art of selling, the student of listening, a student of asking the right questions, mm -hmm. which are all that's, the that's skills. That's easy to do, right? I mean, to, to know how to ask the right question at the right time. Sure. To the right See, person. the average person is telling and talking instead of asking and listening. And there's a real truth here. In any conversation, whoever is talking is only mm -hmm. learning what they already know. Yeah. But when you're talking, I'm learning what you know, which I n need to get to grow to a higher level of accomplishment. So I guess I'm learning much more by asking questions here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good to know. <laughs> I'll keep asking questions then. Um, but you know, were, were there any role models that uh, that you look up to, and you yourself? Uh, I, I know in one of your articles you wrote Zig Ziglar and Joel Austin, I guess, who were, yes. who were folks that have impacted you in some way. Talk, talk us through that. Well, Zig Ziglar and I became friends over 40 years ago. He was one of my first mentors. And uh, he was a good man. He, he taught honesty, integrity, ethics. And so he was uh, one of my role models. Mm -hmm. And um, then, of course, uh, Joel Olstein, because I really believe he's a, he's a young man, though, right? Or Joel <laughs> Olstein? Oh, yeah. He's, he's a young man, but he's the most dynamic mm -hmm. preacher right now in our country. Mm -hmm. And Billy Graham was one of my close friends back many years ago. And I feel that all of us are trying to achieve financial, emotional, physical, and, and spiritual. spiritual success. And you have to work on all of those. And uh, so again, I, I have Joel Olstein as a, a role model in that area. And, and, and total fulfillment means you get it all. You don't just have a lot of money because money won't make you happy after you get it. Mm -hmm. But don't not try to get it because it'll sure make it a better life to have an abundance. Mm -hmm. And then of course, I think also that you need to work physically to stay in shape, to live a long, healthy life. And I think emotionally, we all have to work on coping with crisis, handling challenges, you know, because we have, our world has a lot of negativity mm -hmm. that we have to protect ourselves from. Yep. 
And uh, that's interesting. And, and you know, speaking of that, you know, uh, a lot of people chase success, um, and and yet many yearn for significance. What's your take on that? Well, I think that there, you, we have a right to be successful. Uh, scripturally, that we have a right to an abundant life. And abundance is fine. Now, see, there's two extremes. There's scarcity, and then there's abundance. Right. And many people were raised in an upbringing of scarcity, mm. and they had a challenge getting abundance. But if you start understanding abundance and increase self-esteem and self-image, you can't have abundance come to you, right. which is fine. Right. And it's also a mindset, right? Oh, Having yes. The, the abundance thinking versus the scarcity. That's scarcity right. Mindset, protecting, right. Protecting yourself from the negativity, things that around you that are happening. And uh, you have that in your country. Right now, there's some negative things that have happened since yep. I was here two years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I have a belief, Roshan, that anything that's negative that you can't control, don't spend a lot of mental energy on because that'll get you negative. Mm -hmm. So I can't change some of the GST feelings. I can't change. Our Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so I've got to just let it go, stay focused, get my goal set and go for it. Okay, and, and I mean, have you faced a lot of failures in your life? Oh, uh, sure, well, sure. Tell us, tell us about some of them and how you coped with them and how you overcame them and well, how you progressed. Well, I, I, I don't think anyone in life who ends up successful didn't go through failure. And I believe handling failure and coping with it is one of the keys to long-term success. So years ago, I worked on developing some attitudes that when you fail, you say to yourself, I never see failure as failure but as a learning experience, or as an opportunity to develop my sense of humor. Or when you fail, you laugh, and that makes failure fun. Or the opportunity to practice my techniques, perfect my performance. Right. So all of these attitudes release the negativity when you experience any rejection or failure. It's amazing. You know, time is catching up. We're going to close out this segment of the Leader on Mix show and be right back here with segment three with Tom Hopkins here on the Leader on Mix show. Welcome back to the Leader Nomic Show. I'm with Tom Hopkins. Tom, we were talking a lot about sales mastery. If you could give you know, a couple of nuggets of advice um, to somebody who really wants to master sales, uh, what advice would you give them? Well, there again, if you go to any bookstore, there are shelves of books, not only in self-improvement, but on the art of selling. Back when I started, there were very few. So there are so many resources available today. And I think that selling is an art form that can be learned, but you have to, again, have not only a mentor, but you have to have the person's temperament and personality feel good to you. Uh, I've gone to seminars where I didn't like the person teaching it, and because of that, I didn't want to adapt their training or learn what they were teaching. So find someone you like and trust to help you right. be better in sales. Would you give us one or two tips then? Oh, oh sure. I mean, you have about 40. Uh, uh, well, I teach 40 different questions because right. questioning is the real key. And what I'd love to do is give two that I'd love the folks that are watching to say, I'm going to master those two. And the first is called an alternative choice question, which is a question with two answers. Either answer is leading towards the final decision. Meaning, I'm not going to say, when can we get together? I'm going to say, Roshan, could I see you at one or would three be better? Now you have a choice, one or three. You would you like me to come to your office or would you like to come to my home? Now you can't say yes or no. Right. Would you like to give me a 5% deposit or would 10% be better? See, so the alternative choice is asking them a question with two answers. Either one they pick leads, back leads to, to the final decision. So that's the first one. The well, second one is called a tie-down. Now the tie-down is a question at the end of a sentence that demands a yes. In other words, that was one, wasn't it? I did it again, didn't I? Right. You're catching on, aren't you? <laughs> and a nice little nod. That gets yes momentum, doesn't it? That was one, wasn't it? Right. They're kind of fun, aren't they? So it's taking isn't it, doesn't it, wasn't it, couldn't it, wouldn't it, shouldn't it, can't you, won't you, haven't you, can't you? 
put it at the end of a sentence with a nod, and you're getting what's called a minor agreement, right. which is yes momentum. So get a few concessions, and over time... You get enough coming. minor agreements, and the major decision is carried, mm -hmm. isn't it? Right, so I, I got to learn the other 38 quickly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you also shared something about doing an autopsy, a, a dead sales autopsy. autopsy you know? Oh yes, yeah. I try to make things fun. See, I think in life, in selling or in life, you do th two, three things. You educate a person with what you're saying, right. you motivate them to take action, and have fun. Make it fun. So the dead sale autopsy is, autopsy is what I call it when you don't make a sale. You have to sit down pretending the sale is dead and do what you do in an autopsy. autopsy. Why did they die? Why, why did I, yeah. What did I say wrong? So, How did so I kill the sale? Question and reflect on the whole, whole process. Reflect on every moment. In fact, I try to teach people after a sale, spend five minutes analyzing everything that happened because you'll come up with things you never said before that were creative and you want to build those into your next presentation. Yeah, that's amazing. No, it's good. I mean, it's, it's good. I, I think you could do that for everything, right? Every process, every Oh, encounter. sure. That's I good. agree. That's, 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 that's good insight. You know, tell us a little bit um, about your significance in a sense that what, what do you think is your greatest life achievement? Oh, I would say my greatest life achievement is finding a niche to where I can help a lot of people. In our country, there's approximately 11 million salespeople. And those people are so important to our economy mm -hmm. because free enterprise and capitalism is based on profits to companies and most profits come because someone is selling something. Mm -hmm. So sales is the foundation of our whole economy. Now if a salesperson comes to me and goes back and doubles their income, that doubles the profit to the company that pays more taxes and builds our economy. So that's my biggest achievement, I think, right. Right. was finding this wonderful niche to help the wonderful 11 million people in the United right. States that sell for a living. Yeah. No, which begs this question, you know, why do business schools not teach sales? Um, it's a huge Some part of do business. in our country. It's okay. starting. Okay. And I'm very flattered that this book is in many colleges as the book that they give out when they come to their their uh, uh, course. Oh, okay, that's, that's great. So selling is becoming, and it's accredited in many colleges. I, I had a seminar in Pennsylvania uh, two weeks ago, and this whole class of graduating seniors who had gone for a whole year learning this book came to the seminar and the stories on what they're going to do with their lives, how they're not going to take a nine to five job, they're not going to work for a salary. They're going to find a way to get a creative way to sell and make a greater living. Right. Tell us a bit about this book. I mean, this book started your, your journey. That started it. Yes. It took me three years to write. Uh, back in 1979, this, this first, it came out. My first book, How to Master the Art of Selling. Okay. And uh, it's, it's just been a, an amazing. It's sold about two million plus copies. It's right now hitting two million copies. Wow. And, uh, and it's, it's wonderful because a person can take it and they can study it and they can educate themselves for a small investment as long as they read it and internalize it. Don't just read it and put it on a shelf. You have to read it with a highlighter. Yeah. Each page has 10% of pearls on it and master them. Wow, amazing. And, and you've written a couple of other books. Right? I've written uh, 14 books. 14 books. And tell us a bit, I mean, if I'm a young graduate that's just graduated from university and I come out into the world and I say, I want to be like Tom. I want to be a successful salesperson. Um, I want to master this, this, this space. What advice would you give this young person? Well, I would say this. Uh, I would call the Chamber of Commerce in every city. The Chamber of Commerce will have companies that are members, that are in sales, and if they're Chamber of Commerce people, they're good companies. Then you find out a company to interview. Now, when you are interviewing for a job, you look at the supervisor or the manager, and you want to make sure you feel good about them. Because one of the keys to leadership is to have a leader you really want to follow, and someone you, you respect. 
And I think I, I will almost would have not made it had I not had a wonderful manager when I was 19 who took me under his wing, who taught me what to say and do. Right. And I give him the credit for a lot of my for good fortune today. Including your 365 houses that you sold. 365, <laughs> right. <laughs> Final question. If you were addressing a group of CEOs, um, and, and sales is such an important part of most companies, right? What right. advice would you impart or what wisdom, uh, what pearls of wisdom would you impart to this group? Well, I would say this, a CEO has got to be very aware of the importance of having the attitude that we're selling ourselves to our clients. Uh, Lee Iacocca, who changed the Chrysler Company, and many years ago, the Chrysler Company was almost out of business, right. bankrupt. Right. And he sold, he traveled around the country. I went to one of his programs. I sat there and said, look at this, the CEO of one of the greatest automobile companies in the world He's is up here. there selling the entire company on we must sell people on Chrysler. We're not gonna go out of business. Right, so selling is in every part and every segment of society. It really is. It's a universal language. So we should all embrace it. And, and well, your, you know, just as a, as, a, as a closing, your final thoughts uh, or final pieces of advice to our, uh, to our viewers? I would say uh, work harder on yourself than you do on your job to be a person that relates to more people in a positive way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. It's been a pleasure My speaking pleasure, to Roshan. you. Thank you. We've been speaking to Tom Hopkins, author of 14 books, including Selling for Dummies and also <laughs> a master sales trainer. Tom, thank you so much for being here on the show with us. My pleasure, Roshan. Thank you. Thank you.